The future of tech isn't AI stealing your job. It's something way more subtle, and people are completely missing it. A recent study found that AI is making it harder for entry-level coders to find jobs, but OpenAI pointed to an increased number of AI-related job postings online. Ten years ago, we thought the future might just be better phones, faster code, and more powerful computers. But today, the reality looks much different. The tech landscape has become brutal for new hires, with AI, agent automation, and new platforms completely redefining what it means to be a software engineer. So in this video, I'm going to share the truth about where tech is heading and the tools that you can use to stay ahead of people in 2026. Back when I first started as a software engineer, a career in tech was pretty predictable. You learn to code from scratch, deal with messy deployments, and over-rely on Stack Overflow when things weren't working. That was the rule book, and for a long time, it worked. But today, things have changed. Now we're seeing a massive shift towards AI, automation, no-code solutions, and collaborative platforms. And this isn't just in the tech industry, by the way. It's in every industry. And the biggest issue with all of this is that there's so much noise out there. It's kind of confusing to know which tools to use. But here's the problem with the mindset of choosing the best AI tool. It's kind of like choosing Microsoft Word to code in, create data sets in, and even create slide decks. Microsoft Word is not for any of those things. It's specifically designed for writing documents, not really anything else. Likewise, people are asking the wrong question. It's not about what AI tool to use overall. It's about what AI tool to use for specific tasks. And not understanding the nuances of this is what is going to leave you behind, not AI replacing you altogether. For example, what might a typical office worker use day to day? They might use Microsoft Word, Excel, maybe SQL Server, maybe an IDE if they're coding. But now there are better alternatives or better helpers for each one of these tools. There's also some really good tools for coding like Cursor or Augment. Cursor is its own IDE and then Augment allows you to install a VS extension and they're both pretty cool. And even tools that will help you create entire backend MVPs like Ewer's built-in backend generation, an AI featured app generation including Nano Banana, VO3, and even Midjourney. Like take a look at some of these things that you're able to build with you wear without any code. You guys have probably heard of those images or those videos on TikTok where Ghostface shows up in the background. So you can just upload a picture of yourself and Ghostface actually shows up behind you. Or even this Polaroid memory app, it makes your pictures look like Polaroid photos. So now I want to show you how to actually build your own no code app, because this really is the future of tech. You have to understand vibe coding to some extent. Not everything will need code anymore. In fact, you're going to have to understand more and more how to prompt AI applications. So let's get into the demo. So I want to create an API that's used to keep track of inventory. And so this is what it came up with, you guys, which is insane. Like I didn't have to put any code into the picture. And then it also shows recent items that were added. So it shows like tomatoes and ground beef, what the stock is, the amount of it, the status, if it's low stock or expiring. And then you can also view the report. So it shows like financial reports, alert and analysis orders report. I mean, it added things that I didn't even know I needed, which was pretty cool. I mean, something like this is what people are moving to. And you know, something like what that backend generator was doing without using that, that would take up quite a bit of my workday to set up the repo, add all the files, go through PR comments and test it. This is literally what other developers, accountants, bankers are going to start using. So this is the future of tech. Okay, so all that being done, I wanted to give you a glimpse of how someone in the future might get their work done. So I've shown you a bit about creating an MVP backend, generating slides, and even using coding assistance. But what about video generation? That's a hot topic nowadays. You've probably already seen a ton of AI social media posts, reels where an AI is talking to you, etc. Video generation isn't just for movie makers, but it's for social media advocates and people who are creative and just want to mess around with cool tools. I'm a content creator, of course, so this type of tool is something I would definitely use day a day at my job. So I want to show you what a normal flow or day in my life might look like. So let's say I need to generate a LinkedIn post and then also an Instagram reel. Let's see what that might look like. 
Let's take a look. I'm prompting it to create an AI image generator application with a clean modern interface using the nano banana model. And then I'm gonna give it a little bit more details. Like I wanna create an image generator specifically for LinkedIn posts. And then this is our final product. It's a LinkedIn AI image generator. You can actually use both an image generator and a caption creator since it's for my LinkedIn posts. So on ChatGPT, I'm gonna prompt it. I wanna create a LinkedIn post about why software engineers will be replaced, but not by AI. They'll be replaced by programmers that know the nuances of each tool to use. And then I'll give it an example. There we go. So it's created a post for me. Um, it's not perfect. Of course, go back and iterate on it and make it better. But let's just use this one for now. So let's go back to the image generator. And then let's go ahead and generate the image. And this is what we got. Honestly, it looks a little verbose for my liking. So we're going to iterate on that. So I'm going to tell it, let's make it super simple to understand, clear visuals, not overcomplicated. Okay, so this is better better, but it's still not exactly what I want. And so I'm going to be extremely specific now because sometimes what's in my head or what I'm imagining isn't exactly what ends up coming out on paper. So I'm going to tell it exactly what I want. Okay, so with this picture, I'm explaining that I want to show a humorous photo of someone in my office trying to code in Microsoft Word and then a split screen of someone else trying to create slide decks in Excel and kind of make it more cartoonish. And this is the end result. I actually really like this end result. So it took some toggling. You don't necessarily have to use the entire LinkedIn description. This process actually taught me that using the entire LinkedIn description gives the LLM too much freedom. So I'm actually going to go ahead and use this because again, this is part of my job where I have to post on LinkedIn. And so here you have it. You can go ahead and like that post on LinkedIn if you see it. I'm prompting it and telling it that I want to create a video generator app where I can put a link of a video from YouTube and it will cut that video up and create a reel out of it. Okay, cool. So it went ahead and created my video generator. And so you can see that there's a text to video option and an image to video option. So we can put in the video description. Okay, so we're gonna create a reel that includes something about binary search. It doesn't need narration, but a simple flow that shows what binary search is. And let's use common household objects like cookies or eggs. So it's made small cookies all the way up to the biggest cookie and each cookie has increased the number of chocolate chips. So that's kind of helpful for binary search, but let's do a little bit more animation. So now I'm gonna say, can you make it more comprehensive? And I'll give it an example. Like highlight that the cookies each have one chocolate chip, two chocolate chips, three, etc. progressively. Okay, cool. So now you can see the progression of the different chocolate chips. This gives me good ideation on, you know, short snippets that I could use as an animation in my reels. Okay, now I just wanted to quick show you how you can take an image and also animate that, which is also very cool. Okay, so I uploaded an image and here we go. I'm blinking and looking around. It's kind of crazy. It's like very Harry Potter-esque to see that. Okay, so those demos are pretty cool, right? And also, what exactly does this mean for your future? You can't just rely on some cool tools to create an MVP and call it a day. There's more to the picture than just that. The truth is, winners in the new landscape will be the people that don't just know which AI tools to use, but also the importance of scaling and deploying applications for, of course, if you're a developer. This has always been really important in the world of software engineering, and a lot of people dismiss it as an afterthought. I mean, imagine you build something really cool only to fall short when you're trying to scale it or get it deployed to customers and it's not in working form in the production environment. That's a pretty bad look. You want to make sure that your app can handle thousands of requests, or even if hackers are trying to steal information from you, you want good auth setup for your application. At the end of the day, it's not just about memorizing code. It's about learning how to use systems effectively. And that's exactly what platforms like Uware highlight. By integrating old fundamentals with modern AI-driven workflows, they show us how the future of tech will actually operate. So here's the truth. This is the future of tech. And if you want to stay relevant, you have to start thinking differently. It's not about doing everything yourself, but it's about working with the systems and platforms that are going to shape the next decade. So good luck.